it's Nicole Spore for Simon Says Stamp, and today I have a watercolor pencil no-line coloring card to share with you, featuring components from the Simon Says Stamp March 2021 card kit called Spring Windows. I am using one of the awesome window images from this new 6x8 stamp set included in the kit, as well as the three different brick images on some of the watercolor cardstock also included in the kit. In fact, everything I'm using today from the cardstock to the vellum and pattern paper and stamps are all included in the kit. The only things I am using are a couple of dies from my stash and these watercolor pencils that I actually got in a past Simon Says Stamp Card Kit and they work really, really nicely for creating a beautiful no-line watercolor look. So this background panel is just a four and a quarter by five, no, I'm sorry, four inch by five and a quarter panel of the watercolor cardstock included in the kit. So you get a full sheet and I just trimmed it down a little bit to stamp it. And I started by stamping the window and the bricks using Lawn Fawn Jellyfish No Line Coloring Ink. I'm slightly tracing out the bricks and then using a water brush pen with just a little bit of water in it then to color in those brick areas. I kind of like to do a little trace and then I will color in a section, trace and color in a section. That's kind of what I found worked best for me. That way, um, while I'm kind of maybe outlining, the previous section that I added water to is drying. Now you'll see a little bit later in the video, I did not wait long enough for one area and I got my hand in it and I made a little bit of a smudge on the right side of the window frame. And I'm gonna show you how I fixed that so that I didn't have to start over. Probably the most challenging part of this card design is all of the florals and the beautiful window box, just simply because that is a lot of really light ink on the background that can be kind of hard to see. So I am gonna just quickly go in and add a little bit of this blue to the window portion of my frame. And then I pretty quickly realized I should lay down that little bit of blue in the bottom set of windows because I need to color in those flowers. And I think the light blue, cause I'm doing a really, really light hand to give the illusion of glass. But first, I am going to take a green pencil and trace out all of the leaves and stems that I see. And I will tell you, it is, it can be a little tricky. And one of the things I like to do is I grabbed my stamp set. You can see part of it there in the left side of the frame. I used it as a guide. It would kind of help show me where I needed to go and by outlining all of the leaves and stems first, it was very clear where my florals are. Now, I don't wanna add color to the florals until I've added in the blue of the windows because I don't wanna pull especially a red or a pink into that lighter area. Because we are incorporating water, that is something that can happen. And I do have it happen once and I just dabbed it up right away, which did fix that. But that's kind of my process here and my thinking as I was working on this. Once I get some of that greenery in, it definitely helps. And then it also kind of helps show me where all I want to add blue for the window. And then let's just go ahead and color that little area in since it's our lighter area and get that drying. And you don't have to be super perfect. I think that's probably what I love about this technique is that it's kind of just a nice, light, loose style. 
but once you build up the color and build all of the elements, it really does give you this beautiful springtime window floor, um, flower box image that is so, so beautiful. So this entire stamp set, the spring, um, spring windows six by eight stamp set has two different window options, bricks, um, like a little smattering of I don't know, kind of distressing. It's a really great image. I could see using that a lot. I love little things like that. And tons and tons of different greetings. So lots of great stuff in this new stamp set. And I love that it's a little bit different take on a floral stamp set. Um, instead of the big florals, these are actually images great for a scene builder type of card. There are coordinating dies in the Simon Says Stamp Store, so be sure to check those out if you want to be able to die cut your windows. So I did color in a couple of the red flowers, but I am going to go in and color in my window box. I knew I wanted my house to have that kind of whitish gray brick look. I'm not going to cover the entire thing with bricks, but I am going to re-stamp those bricks a lot. We are going to do the rest of that here in a little bit when, once all the rest of the coloring is done. But I want that combination of a black trim on the window, the light gray brick, with a wood looking window box. So that's kind of my thought process there. And then you can see I'm using a black pencil to very lightly color in and add in that color to my frame. Now I still have part of the window box to color, but I'm kind of letting that dry while I color in the nice casing around this beautiful window. One of the fantastic things that Simon Says Stamp did with this stamp set is that beautiful curved arch above the window. There are three different greetings that work above that, which I think is just so stinking smart. There's wishing you a beautiful birthday, missing you and thinking of you, and sending you hugs and smiles, which is the one I'm gonna to use today. And then there's lots of sentiments you can put down below if you want to. I ended up using two different ones. There's two like circle seal type sentiments as well. So there's lots of different options here, but I just really love the fact that there are these curved ones that work with the window that you don't have to curve yourself. I'm always loving if I don't have to do that because it can be a little bit of a trial and error. I'm using two shades of brown for my window box here. And I would tell you what colors they are, but I don't know. Um, these particular watercolor pencils, um, like I said, I got them in a past kit. They're the Studio 71 watercolor pencils. They work fantastic, but there is no color name on the pencil itself. And I did throw away the box a really long time ago. So, um, that's kind of a bummer, but I think any watercolor pencil that you might have would work here or watercolor markers. I have um, recently just really been kind of wanting to stretch my coloring muscles and use some things that I don't use often. So I tend to gravitate towards Copics or Zigs and um, or even um, regular colored pencils like Polychromos or Prismacolor. So I thought it'd be fun to do a little watercolor look here. I also think that like Tombow markers used for watercolor would be really, really great here. It's something I considered, but I noticed I didn't have a brown, so, or a gray. I didn't have two of the main colors I used, so we went with watercolor pencils today, and I placed an order for some watercolor markers. Now we're just gonna go in really lightly and I'm gonna just kind of do a little contrast here with the window casing. You'll also notice those yellow flowers, I don't think they show up very well. In fact, I kind of was bummed. I kind of felt like they just got lost a little bit in the design. So I did trace them out with an orange. And then because I wanted the window panes themselves to show up from the casing, I just colored those in with that same gray that I'm using for the brick. 
and hopefully that will make those stand out just a little bit. And there was where some of the color seeped in to my window casing. We'll just let that dry and I can come back and blend that out if needed. Let's color in the rest of our bricks. You can see I don't even usually trace the whole thing. I just add a tiny bit of color and there I smeared my hand. So what I did was I actually added clean, clear water to where I smeared it and then would dab it up with a microfiber cloth. You could use a paper towel or something as well. I tend to have um, these microfiber cloths that I wash and reuse over and over. And so I actually just dabbed that up and then I let it sit for a minute. I went ahead and colored in these bricks. I added a little bit more water to that um, smear and then kind of dabbed at it again and then I let it dry the whole way. So we're just gonna let it dry. We'll work on um, trying to disguise the fact that I made that error, just kind of adding a little bit more clean water there, and just dabbing it away. We'll try to disguise that as we add some additional bricks. So I mentioned earlier, there's three different brick images in this um, spring windows stamp set and I love them so we're just actually going to take them then and stamp them a bunch of times again all over the panel I didn't really feel like three gave me the feeling that I was looking for for my card keep in mind as well I will be trimming this down actually die cutting it down into a rectangle using a basic rectangles die from Simon Says Stamp a little bit later so some of this may get cut off I'm not trimming it a ton um, just trimming it down a little bit you can trim it with a paper trimmer as well if you don't have a basic rectangle type die set I love the dies because it gives you an exact measurement every time and we are going to be layering one of the Cardabella flower garden pattern papers back behind this and I'm going to give you a few little tips and tricks about that when we get to it. So just coloring in these bricks, I very, very fast coloring. It's very loose, not super. I'm just trying to get that color down and get that on there. I love the brickwork. I think it makes the window really pop. Now this is going to be the brick image that helps disguise the fact that I smeared some of that color. I was able to get most of it up. There's still a little bit, but we're just going to stamp a brick image right here and color it in. And that's going to serve, not only do I think it needs some bricks, but it's going to help disguise the fact that that little boo-boo happened. So let's add just a few more brick images. I did all of these and then I decided I had avoided the window completely and I didn't want to mask it off. I am using a no-line ink. So I actually just kind of stamped them really, really lightly um, around the actual window because I think in about three different places. Otherwise, it really kind of feels like the bricks are floating and that the window is not, I mean, it is part of the house, but I do think having some brickwork right up next to the window, the flower box, helps a lot. You'll see that here in a second. So this is my last little stamping anywhere around the window and then we are going to take a couple of those images and just add a couple of bricks here and there. I didn't worry about masking off the window. If you um, don't want to maybe accidentally get some stamping on the window, I would suggest maybe masking it off, even a very simple mask. It doesn't have to be uh, an elaborate one. You can even use maybe just a post-it note or something like that. So there's a couple here and a couple down below and I think I need one up high kind of up there to the left if you can kind of visualize what I'm talking about um, to balance it all out really good. I did get some of the brickwork in the window which I didn't like. So here I probably should have used a mask but what I'm going to do to fix that is let's do the bricks first and then I'm going to go back with my blue pencil and just kind of color in more blue in the window area and that really helps fix it. I'm also going to take a different color of green and layer on 
a little bit different shading and color on some of those bigger leaves. And that just makes a nice little additional bit of color. Okay, it is time to do the remaining steps to finish off this card. So first I did die cut my panel with a basic rectangles die from Simon Says Stamp. And then I'm going to place this in my Misty. Before die cutting, I did make sure that my background was completely dry. I let mine air dry, but if you are in a hurry, you can definitely hit that with a heat tool if you'd like. Then I'm taking one of those sentiments that I was talking about that is curved and placing it above the window and another one down below. We're gonna stamp both of them with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. I don't use black ink for my sentiments often and I'm going to kind of give you a reason why today. With watercolor cardstock, and this particular one has quite a bit of texture to it, I was super worried about my ink maybe making not stamping really well or being super legible and ruining this background I took all this time on. So I picked an ink that never fails me and that always stamps a beautiful, bold, crisp black um, word. So that's why I picked that. Then I did take one of the other pattern papers from the kit and use an A2 thin frame to die cut this really teeny tiny little thin frame. And I ran a bead of glue around the background. It's kind of easier to do it that way. And I'm just very gently and lightly placing the frame down over my panel. It's super, super tiny and skinny, but it's gonna help differentiate the background from, um, or the frame then from the, or the background pattern paper, pardon me, from this stamped and colored panel. And I absolutely love this floral pattern paper included in the kit. And I knew I wanted to use it, but it was a little bit too busy. And it took away from the beautiful stamped image we used. See, there you can see what it looks like. So I actually die cut that with my largest basic rectangle die. I die cut some of the vellum from the kit with the same die and adhered it right over that placed some foam adhesive on the back of my colored panel and placed that right there on my card before adhering it to a top fold card base to finish the design. We're gonna pair this card then with the beautiful metallic sea glass envelope included in the kit. It just matches that spring vibe perfectly. And I just love that everything you see here comes in the kit. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this watercolor, no line coloring card. Please be sure to visit the Simon Says Stamp blog for more information. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.